Few of you watching will not remember Tim Russert, the longest running moderator of NBC's Meet the Press from 1991 until his untimely death in 2008. Americans turned to Tim to help make sense of politics in Washington, if not the entire world around us, shaped by our elected officials. As much as his voice and presence are missed by many, there is no one more so than his son, Luke, who has followed in his father's footsteps in more ways than one. And joining me now is Tim's son, Luke Russert, former NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent, former host of The Briefing here on MSNBC, and author of the outstanding new book, Look for Me There, Grieving My Father, Finding Myself. Welcome, my friend. It's so good to see you. Look, we're going to dive into your book in just a moment. But first, your dad was a walking fact checker who approached every single interview with his no-nonsense, nonpartisan approach. What do you think he'd think of the political divide that not only prevents Congress from accomplishing much, but accepts name-calling and lies as normal behavior? Well, Alex, thank you so much for having me on this morning. I have to admit, I got flashbacks when I woke up to an email from MSNBC booking, making sure I was going to be in the right position for my Saturday <laughs> live shot. I thought it was uh, 2012. Like, what? Time um, But you ask a very good question, and I think one thing that I've... I've looked back on is when my father passed in June of 2008, 15 years ago almost, it really feels like it was the end of an era. And what I mean by that, it was when broadcast news and the papers still carried a lot of weight. Cable news was still very much there, not as opinionated as it is now. And social media did not hit you in the face every single moment, just throwing opinion, opinion, often vitriol and very mean things as, uh, in regards to politics. And I think what you see now is a real sort of move away from civility. And that's sad because it does two things. One, it just brings the discourse down to a really awful, disgusting level, uh, which a lot of people want to turn off and just not participate in their own democracy. And secondly, and I think this is just something that we really need to keep an eye on, especially with the younger generation, is there's so many people that don't want anything to do with politics because of how bad it's gotten. And mm -hmm. there's a lack, I think, in the future, you might see a lack of a good caliber candidate because of this. And that's a serious issue, is because you want your best and brightest and most civil people participating. And right now, they look at it, they go, man, I don't know if I want to get involved in that. And I think that yeah. would be something that would make my father very sad, because he very much believed in the American experiment. But part of that is having a uh, real civic participation in, in your democracy. Yeah, 100 percent. You know, we found a 1999, 1999 interview that your dad did with Donald Trump, who was testing the waters for a presidential campaign in the Reform Party. Listen to this. You are a registered Republican. Correct. There is a form that is being filed Monday, tomorrow, with the Board of Elections, which says what? Well, it says that I am joining, as of Monday, the Reform Party, which in New York is the Independence Party, and I look forward to doing so. Why are you joining the Reform Party? Well, for one thing, uh, I really believe the Republicans are just too crazy right. I mean, just what's going on is just nuts. Yeah, that was then. This is now. What goes through in your mind when you, when you hear that? I think what my father did very effectively in that interview, and I think it's something that a lot of us could, could learn from, was he really asked uh, Donald Trump policy questions and did not get much into the personal. And that is something where I think we are very well served uh, in our democracies when there's a focus on the policy. And those types of specific, specific questions about, OK, you were a Republican yesterday or you were a Democrat a few years ago, and now you're here. What is it that the policy shifts that have uh, led to you to go to a new party. And in that case, the Republican Party got into two right. Uh, I think today it's now gone uh, full circle on that on that mm -hmm. proclamation. But it's honing in on what would you do specifically regarding health care? What would you do specifically regarding nuclear weapons? What would you do specifically regarding income inequality, et cetera? Uh, instead of the personal politics, which a lot of politicians are much more comfortable playing because they can run out the clock. If you if yeah. you come at it from a personal standpoint, it's very easy to say, oh, you don't like me, the press is rigged, I'm going to go away. Yeah. 
I think everyone should look up that interview if they possibly can. 1999 F1. It's extraordinary and revelatory. Quickly, your book is beautifully written, Luke. I settled in to finish it after crying a bit through chapter one when you're writing about your father's sudden death and how you could hear him cheering you on as you delivered his eulogy at the funeral. You worked in TV, covered politics until just before the 2016 election. You boldly took off from everything you knew with Chamberlain, your pug dog, and your old truck. Mm -hmm. What was that journey across three years and six continents all about for you? Well, it was affirming in a way which I knew that I needed to leave NBC because I felt anxious. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I felt that I was upholding a legacy and I didn't know who I was independent of my last name and independent of my hometown. And I set out to travel just hoping to find some clarity and it didn't come immediately. It took, uh, it took some time. I was going through a difficult period in 2018, and I started to review journals, and I realized I was doing two things, that I was simultaneously trying to outrun something, and that was grief, and then looking for something, and that was trying to find my identity separate of my father. So that's what the book's about. It happens over six continents and a deeply internal journey in many external physical places. So I hope you check it out. Uh, we will. This is my copy, everybody, but I'm allowing anybody who wants to come in my office and borrow it, but they can't keep it. Bring it back. Feel free to buy more if, uh, if you can't get Alex's copy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's exactly what they should do. Luke Russert, it's a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much.